Hi everyone, today we're going to be installing some LED rock lights on Rock Trooper. I did have some lights on there that I used as rock lights prior, but it became painfully clear after several night runs that those lights were just not adequate. Um, I actually blew a couple uh, going across some water, uh, and they just weren't throwing off enough light for me to depend on them uh, and going across some of the more difficult trails running night. Uh, so it's time to go pro, time to get some real rock lights on this, uh, on this Jeep. So let's go check out and see what we got. While researching several different vendors that offered LED rock lights for the Jeep, there's this one company, Lux Lighting Systems, that really piqued my interest. They offer an innovative way in order to get rock lights uh, installed into the uh, underbody of the Jeep by basically placing magnets in the back of the uh, LED light housing uh, right here. This is going to give us the maximum flexibility to install these lights basically anywhere we want to. Um, they're rock proof, mud proof, sand proof, and waterproof which is going to be great for what I need out here in Southern California or basically anywhere where you're going to take that Jeep. So let's bust open these packages and check out what we got inside. Alright, so I opened up one of the, uh, the Rock Light packages. So in each package comes with four lights. Uh, so one of the lights here, you check this is the, the light housing. Uh, the magnets are in the back right here so I can't wait to check them out. Also in the package comes some zip ties and then in the um, uh, package itself actually gives you an uh, insulation uh, diagram on how to hook up the lights. And if we take a look at the insulation kit, the insulation kit comes with everything you need in order to hook up the 12-pack uh, of the, uh, the, the Lux lighting uh, systems. So it comes with um, the switch here, comes with a package of additional uh, items, uh, including some shrink wrap, uh, looks like some additional fuses, some hardware, uh, some mounting pieces that we would use the zip ties to, to mount the, uh, the wires to. It also comes with the zip ties. And then for the insulation kit, also comes with the, uh, the insulation diagram, um, as well as some detailed instructions on how to set that up. So that's a good addition to uh, the packaging contents there. So let's go ahead and, and check one of these lights out. I'm really curious to see how these are going to uh, adhere to the, uh, the metal part of the Jeep. Alright, before I install the lights, I do want to go over the light in a little bit more detail to show you the, the quality of how the lights are made. Um, so the, the wire itself, it's actually triple insulated, so we have the, the leads uh, are insulated. We have another uh, insulation on top of that. And then as we get a little bit further down into the wire, see if you can see that, that's a third layer of insulation. That third layer of insulation runs all the way up uh, into the housing. And the housing itself is not a plastic, it's not a metal. It's actually a high impact resin. So you'll see here, this is going to help definitely keep the elements out. It's completely sealed. Uh, and then any impacts uh, that we you know, run into it, with the exception of just you know, putting the full weight of the Jeep on it, um, this is really going to hold up. So I'm really looking forward to how you know, these work out, out on the trail. So let's uh, stop wasting time and get these installed. Alright, so as you can see, we're at the rear of the Jeep. I wanted to test out the metal connectors to see how they're going to work. So let's get up underneath the Jeep and check it out. Alright, so we're in the back passenger side. Uh, let's check out, see how these are going to connect. Oh, that's nice. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah, I mean, basically, these are going to allow us to put these LED lights anywhere. All right, now that's connected to the body. Uh, I could put them, you know, maybe back here, across the frame. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is sweet. This is really going to give us the opportunity to put these anywhere uh, that there's a metal surface. All right. Let's get these installed. So with the 12-light system, we're basically going to split the Jeep in half uh, and put six down one side and six on the other. I'm going to put a diagram up here so you can see exactly where we're going to place them. Now placement of the LED rock lights is of course going to be a personal preference, uh, but I wanted to show you where I am installing my lights uh, as I go through the process. 
Um, on the Rubicon 10th anniversary and the newer uh, Rubicon models like the X and the Rock Hard, uh, they come factory with a, uh, a steel uh, front bumper as well as a real bumper. Um, it also comes with a steel skid plate, right? So it gives me a lot of places for attachment of the LED rock lights up front. So what I've decided to do uh, was place the lights right underneath the front bumper in between the bottom of the front bumper and the skid plate here. And you might ask that, you know, it might be a bad spot, especially if it come up on rocks and stuff like that. But unless I come down on the light directly uh, with an impact, again, the, the, the great thing, the versatility of the lights is that they can pop right off. Right, and if I'm coming up on areas where I know I'm going to come up on a lot of rocks that are coming up the front, guess what? I'll take the light off, stick it to the back there. That's all I need to do. It's awesome, right? So it really shows you the versatility and and the uh, the options you have uh, with these rock lights. Uh, basically, placing them anywhere where you can find a, uh, a flat metal surface. Let's see, you see right here. Same place on the uh, driver's side. And I'm just starting to run the wires now behind the front bumper. You'll see the wires coming up there uh, and then up into the engine compartment. So I'm going to continue through the process and I'll show you as I go along. In order to get the wire runs up from underneath the, uh, the belly of the Jeep up to the engine bay so I can connect it up to the spot, I'm going to remove the, uh, the horn uh, and the, uh, the plastic molding piece uh, that's connected to the, uh, the driver's side. Uh, of the uh, body of the Jeep. So you're just going to use a, uh, a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, there's going to be a bolt here. There's going to be a bolt here. And then if I get you to see down there behind the horn, there's going to be another 10 millimeter bolt down there. So we're going to take the horn off first, take this bolt off, and then we'll get an extension and take the other bolt off down there. All right, so I want to show you where I'm mounting the uh, LED lights uh, for the front wheel well. So right now we're on the passenger side. Um, there is a bracket, metal bracket, that connects to the uh, factory fender flares. I'm going to mount the light right to there, run the wires back behind the, uh, the panels here. And you'll see here I'm just loosely placing the wires. Um, just for right now, until I get everything connected and lined up, the wires are just loose, making sure that I have enough room to uh, run all the wires back up to the uh, spot in the engine compartment. Let me go over here and show you the driver's side. So you'll see the light here, same location on the uh, fender uh, flare bracket right there. And you'll see the wires that are coming across right here. So you'll see the two coming from the passenger side and then one right here for the front uh, driver side bumper. Up underneath the uh, body mount running across the frame. Again, we're just doing it loosely. Um, these are just tucked back up and I find a, a location I can mount right behind the, the shock bracket. And as you can see, the wires are just coming up right underneath here. So again, we remove the horn so we can get easy access to the wires coming up through the engine bay. All right, so let's continue on. All right, so we're looking at the passenger side side lights. We're going to hook up two lights in this location. This is going to be towards the rear passenger side. And as we walk our way up towards the front, you're going to see that's going to be by the passenger side front seat. So you see here the wires are just loosely placed. We ran them up over the frame and we're going to take them out the other side here there they are and then what we're going to do is we're going to run these wires across the cross member you see i just have um, little placeholders right now that i think i'll hook them up to but we're going to run these across to the driver side uh, attaching them to the cross member and you'll see here just continue that process or the uh the wire run uh, over to the driver side and then we're going to take it up over the frame mount. So I can get you underneath here. And now we're going to see here the driver's side. This is the driver's side front light. As we go towards the back, that's the driver's side rear light. All right, so we're going to learn these wires. All four of these wires now are going to go up the driver's side and up the front panel up into the engine compartment there. So I'll show you the top view in a second. All right, so you see here we have the bundles uh, that are run up to the engine compartment. I've set them separated for the front. This is the front bumper and the uh, front uh, passenger and driver uh, wheel wells. And then this is going to be the side of the Jeep, both the passenger and the driver side. All right, so let's uh, continue on. Now we're going to work on the uh, rear wheel wells and then followed by the rear bumper. All right, now we're looking at the rear of the vehicle. This is the passenger side. I want to show you where I mounted the 
lights for the uh, rear wheel well. Uh, so it's going to be in the back, more towards the back here, uh, on the inside part of the fender. You'll see. Let me just pull it apart. There you go. This is the light here. Right up in the back side. Uh, that'll give it enough room to really get out of the way. Uh, but again, if it does catch on something, we have some play here in order to have the light pull away from the uh, rear wheel if needed. So just ran the wires. Uh, inside part here of the fender well you see they just kind of loosely run right now um, just got some some backings and some zip ties there to hold them in place and then one ran the wire down here um, so it's going to run back up to the engine compartment uh, through the side of the vehicle right underneath the, the rock rails and I'll show you the same thing on the driver's side as well so driver rear wheel well there you go you see the light up in there and again, the cable is going to be run right down the side, uh, inside part of the wheel well, and then up the side of the vehicle uh, by the rock rail right there. All right, so let's move on to the uh, rear of the Jeep and get those lights installed. All right, now we're at the rear of the Jeep. So there are a few options that I had in order to put the lights on. Uh, the rear bumper on this one's steel, so I could have mounted it to the rear bumper there. Um, up underneath the frame, uh, for the bumper, obviously, is steel, so we could have put them there. But I opted to put them up underneath here, uh, behind the muffler, and then inside the cross member to the frame. You'll see, here's the light on the passenger side. And if we move over here, here's the light on the driver's side. Now, this may not be the final place I'm going to put these lights, but you know, with the flexibility that we have with these lights, to really kind of take them off and put them anywhere we want, I did leave myself enough slack uh, in the wires in order to move it back to the rear bumper or anywhere in the rear bumper if I really needed to. So you'll see here that around the wires, uh, basically this one on the passenger side is going to cross the cross member here, right there, and then over to the driver's side, and then obviously the one on the driver's side is going the same way. So we took those wires and then ran them right up the driver's side, right by the rock row. You see all the cables running up there. So that gives me the shortest run uh, to the engine compartment where uh, we'll be able to power these lights up. All right, so you can see that we have all the wires run up to the uh, front driver's side part of the Jeep. You'll see here, these are all the cables that are running basically from the uh, rear bumper, uh, rear wheel wells, and then the, uh, the passenger and driver's side of the vehicle uh, up through here. And then we have the wires that run from the uh, driver and passenger front wheel well. Uh, as well as a front bumper run up to the engine bay here. So we're going to run everything up here to the engine bay. Uh, then we're going to label everything, uh, make sure we have everything you know, good for connectivity points, and then we're going to connect it up to the spot. So before I start cutting each wire to the length that I want, I ran everything up into the engine compartment, connected them up, uh, and then determined which wire ran to which light, and then I labeled them accordingly. This will give me the flexibility to uh, make sure I have enough wire for the ones that I want to maybe relocate later. Um, so right now I'm going to go back and, and start from the, the rear of the Jeep uh, to the front, start firming up the locations for the, uh, the lights, uh, start working on the cable management, and we'll start wrapping this job up. Okay, now we're getting down to wire management inside the uh, engine compartment. So what I decided to do is uh, grouped all the wires into fours, basically. So here's a, a set of four that's going to be the front. This is the front bumper and the uh, front uh, driver and passenger uh, wheel wells. Uh, another set is going to be the, uh, the midsection, basically the uh, passenger and driver's side, uh, middle part of the Jeep. And then the other set is going to be the uh, passenger and driver rear wheels uh, and the, uh, the back bumper. Um, so they're all lined up. Uh, they're all run through now to the engine bay. I decided to use a different color wire loom just so I can separate uh, the other wires that I have running for the other lights and accessories um, for just the rock lights. Uh, so let's go ahead now. We're going to cut the wires to length uh, and then make sure we got enough room and, and space to uh, place them in the engine bay. All right, now that we got all the wires cut to length inside the engine bay, I'm going to cut back the, uh, the coating uh, on the wires themselves uh, so we can marry them up to the connection that I'm going to run over this spot. All right, so our final test of the lights worked out great. All 12 lights lit, uh, no issues, no problems. Now we're going to get on to the uh, final stage of uh, connecting the lights directly up to the S-Pod. Uh, so we're going to do uh, a couple things in order to protect the connections. Uh, we're going to use a, a butt connector. This is an 8-gauge watertight heat shrink butt connector 
that we're going to use and, and connect to basically each side. Those lights or those wires coming from the uh, the rock lights, and then we're going to run the uh, the wires coming from the S pod here. Now on either side of the butt connector, we're going to install some three inch. Um, this is some uh, marine heat shrink. Uh, so basically, we're going to close off the connections and uh, and seal them up on either side of the butt connector. And then on top of the butt connector, what we're going to do is use a half inch uh, marine heat shrink as well. So we're going to close it up on the butt connector and then close it up on either side of the butt connector. This will help keep any type of water, sand, dust, anything else uh, out of the connection so we won't have to uh, worry about you know, uh, losing connection or getting some uh, uh, contaminants inside the uh, connectivity points here. Alright, so we have the butt connector uh, married up to both pieces. We're just going to uh, lock it down. You see here we got no pull either side. Uh, and then we're going to move over the heat shrink. This is going to be on the rock light side. So we'll just push this down here. And then we'll get our heat gun and seal this in place. I probably overdid it a little bit too much with the uh, the uh, heat shrink around it, but I'd rather have a, um, a little over coverage than uh, under coverage. So uh, we're just going to continue that same process with the rest of the connections and uh, get them set up. All right, so you can see here that we have all the wires connected up. Uh, we have them married successfully to the wires that are running to the S-Pod. Uh, I did one last final test to make sure all the lights work just in case, and we're good to go there. Uh, so now we're just going to clean up the area inside the engine bay. We're going to get all the uh, wires inside the wire loom uh, and get them cleaned up, run alongside the, uh, the driver's side uh, fender here and then up to the S-Pod.